last time we played Echo Fox, we just threw and we had absolutely no excuse for losing. What is going on in this fight? That's gonna be an R going down. Impact plays coming in from Fox. Echo Fox is good in some ways, but they're lacking in a lot of others. Right, 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 right. Auto, 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 auto. Watch your arm. Cool. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, This is bad, this is bad. Noise back, 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 back. The grids were looking really shaky lately too. They just lost to Golden Guardians. They lost to us. I think it'll be pretty easy like last time. Long enough for the team to get back. The health bars are being deleted on the side of Team Liquid as they get washed away. I think we look dominant against every single team so far. People are going to realize, oh, Echo Fox is not that good. Hello and welcome back for Game 3, where Echo Fox face off against Team Liquid. First things first, let's take a look at the starting lineup. Selecting the blue side, it is Echo Fox. In the top lane, of course, we've got Huni, Jungle, Dardoch, Phoenix in the mid lane, Altec and Adrian in that bottom lane, and Coach and Arrow behind them. Absolutely, and on the red side, it is going to be Team Liquid with Impact up top, X Smith in the jungle, Poe Belter mid, double lift, and Ole in the bottom lane with Coach Kane. Now, earlier on NALCS Countdown, Mark and Jet, I had you guys do your Mark draft. How closely this will resemble the actual <laughs> draft is left to be determined. Uh, but as we yeah. throw it back up here, what you guys had looked at, let's talk a little bit about uh, draft strategy one, but also two Jet. Yeah. Yesterday, we were talking about the fact that blue side seemed to be an overwhelming, you know, uh, win percentage here in the North American LCS. And right off the top of the day, both red side teams have won. Yeah, and I think one thing we were talking about, too, is how that uh, needs to get manipulated in the actual draft as well because right. we see a GP, Zoe, and Skarner are must-bans on red side, but you need to then play what's going to get left up. So Azir and Rise in that situation, or Galio is a really high priority one, but Phoenix doesn't play that. And now you're looking at a situation where we haven't seen Dardoch play Skarner yet. Yeah, and we're seeing the fact that most people don't want to give Huni Gangplank, and most people don't want to give Phoenix Zoe or Azir. So you're, you're really handcuffed drafting against Echo Fox on blue side because unlike the two teams that have lost on blue side today, Optic and FlyQuest, Echo Fox, I feel like, is fully capable of abusing the power pick, first pick champions to their fullest extent, which puts you in a really bad situation. The question, though, is does Dardoch play Skarner? Okay. Because they banned it nope. blue side last week, and he was saying on stream that he hates the champion. Well, there you have so it. So this, this is the one potential hole in Echo Fox's. Otherwise, I feel like impossible to beat blue side is if they don't play Skarner. They're wasting a ban there, and then they're They going watched our segment. They saw that Sion <laughs> that pick. That pick countered you, <laughs> They saw it in segment. the first rotation. They're like, damn, that oh, looks annoying. Get it out of yeah. here. Yep. Zoe GP in their last ban, I think, should be Azir, unless Paul Belter's feeling really frisky against Phoenix's Azir. Okay. Right, and so I had Echo Fox banning Galio and Rise. They're not doing either the of those. The ban is actually really curious to me. But the thing is, Echo Fox holds all of the cards in this scenario. They right. get to dictate the pace of this draft because, as I mentioned, Team Liquid is handcuffed. Those are the exact same bans I had because I don't think you have any other choice. Right, right, right. Yeah, you you, you didn't have an option in that yeah. case. You basically knew what the three bans are going to throw out is, Mark, your situation was more difficult flexible. because you could choose one of, you know, X number of paths. Right, and the, what I was looking for was limiting some of Team Liquid's playmaking from the mid lane because Phoenix doesn't get out of lane and roam super well. So I was like, all right, I don't want to play against that Galio but it seems like Echo Fox right now not as concerned about that. They go for the Sejuani first pick, which was what I did as well, given yeah. that you have the Skarner uh, banned out, but we had more power picks banned away, so it was easier to pick the Sejuani for me here. You're not, you're not giving up as much. Yeah. Right, so I'm not giving here, up as much, but you... In my draft prep, I was actually planning on going with Galio Camille if it was available. Um, okay, I, and you, so that is technically available here. And you right. don't need to have it all here right away. There's also the fact that Sion is no longer available as that safe NAR counter afterwards. So Here's your Galio. That's why Mark banned it, I think, as well, because Team Liquid's going to take it right away. The only question and is... That's what I was going to do. Yes. So, so that was, was the plan. Up. Mark if Galio was, was able up, to foil it to Galio some degree with exactly. his ban. Right, and one of the things was I, w I wasn't concerned about the Camille if it was just by itself. I trust Huni to take whatever counter pick he thinks exists into it uh, or just taking the matchup of the Gnar. But I would not want to do that with the Galio because it makes the, the 1v1 that is normally kind of skilly a lot less skilly with, with the Galio coming in. Do you take his top laner here though? Because well, that could technically be uh, are they gonna flex Camille the of all again? things, right? I, w I would expect not. Uh, they might go for oh Fiora flex because this is apparently what they love doing. I took yeah. Fiora off. Why do you flex? I didn't even put Fiora on my priority. Down. I didn't put it on my mid list. I was like, I am not picking that. Right, yeah, great. can't confirm. Actually, it's not even on your top lane list either. Yeah, You're like just yeah. keep this pick away. No, from Fiora, Echo Fiora should be on my top lane list, but there's so many right. things at some point. There are like, enough of them. I had Yasuo, Lucian, Alawi, Pantheon. I was like, you know what? There's just any. Yeah. So this is what surprised me a little bit. I had D prior 
prioritized uh, the jungle pick a little bit in the draft because I wanted the bottom lane to be more important. However, a lot of these things do change when the other team is already locked into jungle and your solo lanes are set and they've already locked in their AD carry because I don't think you can fully target ban all of Doublelift's AD carries out as Echo Fox, so taking Kha'Zix here is actually okay. Well, so what was interesting too is uh, Tristana wasn't banned in my game and I didn't want to play the Kalista into Varus. So I didn't take Kalista there, I took Tristana instead, but right. Kalista is Echo Fox's highest priority AD carry. It's very self-sufficient, so you would expect a double span. AD carry bans here is what I would think. I think yeah. they'll go Varus as well. And at this point, the draft has changed so much because it's a it's a ripple effect, right? No, so, I'm holding you 100% yeah. accountable. <laughs> so the solo lanes are different, and at this point, it becomes a really interesting question for TL since they need to pick their whole bottom lane, and Echo Fox still can Ooh. save that solo lane pick. So there's so many things they can play into Camille. I'm expecting Vladimir from uh, Huni into the Camille, but he has a ton of counter picks. I thought about Pantheon was a possibility. There's a lot of weird things he can play. The concern if you go with the Vlad is you end up very AP heavy. Yep. Interesting, like Echo Fox banning the Zaya of trying to avoid the Zaya Rakan lane. Uh, it's interesting because one of the things about Doublelift that people have been very critical of him is that he has a very quote unquote limited champion pool. Not like he's right. bad, but he has like an effective champion pool where if Lucian's meta, I'm picking Lucian every game. If I can get Tristana, I'm taking Yasuo. Tristana every game. That's one of his weird picks. And the Shen, which I banned in phase two of our draft because it's one of the most banned champions against Echo Fox. We'll see if they end up going with it. Oswald into there. Camille? Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Do we even know how that matchup goes? He plays it a lot in solo queue when he does. I saw one win, one loss. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's, it's confusing of. to There's me. There's that Varus you're scared of. Yeah, yeah, so Varus would be the obvious pick for AD carry from here on. But what's interesting with the Yasuo is it's win wall doesn't stop really anything of the Camille Galio combo right. other than the winds Dude. of war, which at that point, if you're getting comboed, you're already dead. So this is not very effective versus anything he's gonna be facing on the top side of the map. So All right, it's interesting to me. So comps are locked in. I now wanna get your guys' assessment of these comps in isolation from your mock draft. Let's move away from the mock yeah. draft. We've, we've arrived at the comps as we see on screen here. Who won? I think TL won. I think I like TL better as well. Okay. Uh, Why? Just because the Galio Camille is very strong, the Yasuo is, as far as I'm aware, not a great counter matchup into the Camille. Mm -hmm. uh, and then your bot lane is very strong. I was scared of that Varus into Kalista, which is kind of what Team Liquid got here. So they've got a lot of strong things yeah, the going worry, for them. The worry for me is that, that uh, Echo Fox's laners are going to be too good. Yeah. Like if That's, the yeah. Kalista smashes, if the Rise gets pressure, they're going to be able to snowball and win that game very quickly. If that doesn't happen, I think TL can win with Galio Camille. So you think we go to team fights uh, even in gold and TL comes away with it? I'm more yeah. concerned of uh, laning kind of getting smashed. Like if the Galio gets onto the map and starts affecting dives in the bot lane, dives in the top side, right. and then you're not going to the game even from even, I feel a little bit better for Echo Fox, but not too much. Now, before we get in the game, now that we've seen pick ban come all the way through, I am going to give you guys a once in a lifetime, no, once in a day opportunity. I get to flip flop? Uh, you can flip flop if you want to flip flop on your predictions from the top of the day. Mark, are you flip flopping your own two and flip flopping? You go first. I'm flip flopping. I actually love that team. That is going going to flip flop. He nope. is going to call Team Liquid and Mark is holding strong with Fox Coin. There you have it. That's actually very interesting that you're going to go for that, Chad. I mean, you put in a lot of weight behind uh, the I knew the Yasuo Camille matchup more Liquid. certainly, then I would potentially flip flop. All right, well, as we load onto the Rift, it's time to hand it back over to Riv and Zyrene to call the game. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We are into game three of the day to see if it is going to be a 10 and two Echo Fox or an eight and four Team Liquid after a victory here on the Rift. And at both teams, we see it a little flip floppy on the desk there as Team Liquid kind of coming out pretty strong in that pick ban. Yeah, and after that pick ban and that flip flop, you know, I gotta ask the question that's on everybody's mind. Will the PA Joel go three and oh at the start oh of the day? Oh my word, will, will he? Will he beat out the analysts? I don't know, man. That's what makes me really excited about this. But in all seriousness, though, this is the first place team versus the third place team here, tied for third with Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. And Team Liquid actually drafted the same three champions in top jungle and mid as TSM did yesterday versus Echo Fox. And TSM beat Echo Fox. They smashed them by using Galio, which I think is such a great pick against Echo Fox's style right. this split, where they love to skirmish. And the Galio will almost guarantee that those skirmishes get lopsided right in the middle of it. So Echo Fox, the style that they're used to, may not be what works out here. Yeah, they were also playing that against TSM's blue side. So that was Bjergsen coming from Galio Blue. Now TL get to play that from the red side. So they get to mix it up, mix and match. Invade on the top side, look at that. They actually went around the vision. Huni and Dardoch invaded and they're taking the red. 
Interesting that they're going for this aggressive top side, and this might be to split and have the jungle for Dardock be the top okay. and the top quadrants instead of going on the bottom side. So this allows him to get that Yasuo in a 1v1. And in the pregame lobby, we were looking at the chat, and Huni said, nobody come top. World finalists only. 2013 versus 2017. So we'll see if it's a gentleman's duel in the top lane and yep. if they respect that. That was pretty funny. I wondered if they would bring it up, and it was actually who needed to say, hey, we're going to play this World Championship, man. And we'll see how they do in that matchup. So we'll see if also Dardoch can put a little bit of pressure on that, or they're just kind of setting up the ring to say nobody can come up here. Nobody. Violet lane has that Callista Tom catch. Very hard for Ole to really get anything to stick in this lane. As Adrian can just save his AD carry right now. Just a hail of arrows from double lift over and over again to keep that push a little bit in their favor as he cleans up the last few waves to keep it even. No real pressure towards either side, and they kind of go back to even jungling as they head back to the Raptors and scuttle towards top here for Xmithy. Yeah, but Xmithy gets that top side. TP from Alltech already, so we actually summoner spellbook swapped it out. They did see the Kazakhan top side. Huni has to back up here. Will he win well? Nope. Jumps through. Gets the flash. Ooh. He stops. Void Spikes are going to slow him down, but the minions, he can slow him through on the turret. Yeah. Only a few shots. Ooh. Huni gets out alive. And the flash is blown, but also impacts and Smithies. They may be able to repeat a gank on that one. Taunted in. Pole Belter, another Winds of War to keep Phoenix down just a little bit in mid as they share the same mana pool. Yeah, they both have that summoner spellbook and cleanse currently. May back and swap it out for teleport. You can see Huni goes to the top side. And now Dardoch has been able to go through his bottom side. So Dardoch went for three quadrants instead of just two. And that left Huni vulnerable on the top side. And they found that window yeah. where he just had to use his teleport to get back. And in this matchup, I've actually played this one a few times because I spammed Camille a whole bunch. And I probably you know, am not the best Camille, and the Yasuos are usually one tricks. But Yasuo will win this matchup. And there's a fun little interaction where he can actually win wall your hook shot and it dissolves it completely. So if you hook shot to a wall or he's on top of you and you try to hook shot away and he places the win wall, it actually just deletes the ability. Ouch. You become the projectile. Yeah. And then you are shut down. <laughs> there's a few things that play weird to that, but it's always good to know the situation or matchup you're up against because that can take you off guard very big. No Impact should know that interaction. We'll see if it comes time. He hasn't really tried to get in in these early levels. Bot lane now pushed back towards Echo Fox. Seems to be pretty even farming here as they're just kind of going turret to turret back and forth without too much engaging. Yeah, and we'll see how much these junglers are doing in terms of monitoring each other. Mm -hmm. It's just been kind of trading sides of the map, but not fully for Team Liquid. Uh, I feel like Dardoch did get a bit of a better clear there. He's level four, as you can see. Saw him. And he has one buff still ticking on him, as well as boots. So he does have an advantage over Smithy. So he gets to kind of force him out of the jungle, clear these wards, and then he'll kind of get him back and put wards with the tracker's knife yep. in his bottom side uh, so that he'll be able to track him on that area. Actually, looks like he's not going to commit for it. So doesn't go in. He just goes for some shallow wards in the river. It's interesting, too, because they just knew Pole Belter went up. He didn't try to get himself deeper. They have an idea in mind of what to do. Seems like very, very calm in the early game is what that idea is so far. As they stay on their own side of the map for the time being. Smithy up to his wolves as he get a quick push in still from top lane. 42 to 30 there as Impact is definitely taking a little bit of a hit here. Still cleaning up those minions in front of the turret, so it doesn't look as bad as it actually is. Or isn't as bad, I should say, as it looks. 8.6 to 8.3. Just a few hits on that minion wave towards the top side and plays around the map. Dardoch now, with bot side clear after Raptors, might find a little bit of focus towards the mid lane as his camp will be clear. TP back in from Impact here. Now, kind of gives you an idea of how these, uh, the lane will play out as they'll be there for a bit of time now. Yeah, the Sheen helping him out a lot, and we'll mm -hmm. see what Mooney goes. Triple Doran's Blade, okay. <laughs> this is uh, this is the old Rengar special in top lane. This is the, I want to win the lane. We made it so like things like Galio can't stack, you know, the Doran's Ring and have success, yeah. but nothing happened to Doran's Blade. So he just keeps stacking some HP, uh, some lifesteal. He also has um, Overheal, and he also has Ravenous Hunter and Taste of Blood. So Huni has a lot of ways to just get HP back and right. kind of force this 1v1. And I also started looking at a, 
some of these precision mass, uh, keystones, or I guess runes, mm -hmm. later in the tree, because mostly it was people are taking coup de gras every single time. Puni has last stand, which gives you more damage the lower you are. So it feels like he's going to start trying to go for those later trades where they're 50%, you're 40%, and you'll try to sustain out. It kind of feels like your bread and butter. Exactly, but hold on, top lane. Actually, Dardock is searching for Xmithy, but Xmithy is already in position. Oh, Huni took the close dash. He put himself distance in the lane, and now Xmithy's just looking for a quick hit to get himself from damage. Huni finding those attacks. That's where the coup de gras comes in to get a little bit more, but not enough. <laughs> First blood going over to it, Smithy as they get impact a little help. And you can see Dardock, maybe he could have gone up to the top mm -hmm. side, but the Galio is going to make it up there first. And yep. That's why I think the Galio just shuts down Echo Fox's team and the way that they like to play, not just from a compositional standpoint, but from a stylistic standpoint. I feel like it's such a good pick. And the fact that they didn't go banned here oh, is very questionable because they lost against it yesterday. And one day is not a lot of time to make huge adjustments to the way that your team plays. And this here, yeah, it's great for McSmithy because McSmithy, as a Kha'Zix, you'd want to do your red and then go gank. And Dardock is kind of looking for that here. Hangs out by the red, but McSmithy is already topside. And Hooney's just like, you broke the gentleman's agreement, McSmithy. <laughs> You're supposed to stay out of the champion's lane. Not this time. I'm going to get that one going. Impact going to be able to make just those plays. As this game gets going, eight minutes in, that is a nice push towards Huni, so he'll be able to do whatever he really wants with that wave. Kind of cleared it out himself, though, so towards the middle of the lane, you can see him farming it out now. He wants to keep it pretty even. Phoenix clearing out the mid waves as we get stopwatches coming up now, and Blue Buff transfer over to Poe Belter. Yep, Poe Belter will pick that one up. The Galio with two Doran's rings. Nole holding the minion wave. He's going to take some portal combat. Fighting so over uh, if he can hold the minion wave or not. It's about the extent of the excitement you get as a early game support. Man, that's got to feel good. Eight and a half quest finish there for Adrian. Yeah, it's actually that really is early. really good. He was up on the turret pretty hard at that in that case, or at least just getting some tongue lashes. Bandit, yeah, yeah. bandit passive will yep. help you out a lot, especially with glacial augment. Mm -hmm. If you get that first auto and you start chasing yeah. him down, it feels really good. Ole still got quite a bit of time to go. Not much. But he'll have his quest, obviously, before they get out of lane. That just means a little bit more vision for Echo Fox on the bottom side of the map as Huni walks over a bit of that himself. Yeah, I want Invasion for Dardoch on the top a, side. I want a quick second to talk about some of these interesting runes that we're seeing here. Because Dude. the taste of blood for Huni is going to help him sustain. He also has the last stand, which gives you more damage the lower you are. But then there's some other unique choices here. For example, Olay has the Hextech Flash Traption. So... The Alistar will be able to make flash plays even when it's down. Always annoying. And then, like I said, with Coup de Gras being kind of the default mm -hmm. precision bottom tier of uh, rune, or the bottom tree rune, uh, Double Lift has cut down. See here, Impact, probably get away? Yeah, he gets away. Doing a bit of Hasaki. But yeah, Double Lift has cut down. And cut down's the one that gives you more damage to people who have more HP than you. Right. So he's saying this Yasuo, Sejuani, Rise, they're all going to get a little bit more HP than me. And so he's looking for that permanent kind of damage increase against certain champions, as opposed to the conditional ones of they need to be at this amount of HP right. for me to get bonus damage. <laughs> so as throwing a bit of love out to Huni, and I kind of... Is that love? It, I feel like he's <laughs> disrespecting his opponents. I mean, like, this guy's playing good, he can do a lot, but that disrespect can come back to bite you sometime mm. as well. If you get a little aggressive and play a little too hard, or if your lane's not warded correctly, you might get ganked in the early game for first blood. Yeah, Huni does apply a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and right now, Xmiddy is just going to run up to the top side. And yeah, the pressure sponge is online. Huni did have a good game yesterday, despite the rest of his team, you know, 0 3, 1 5, 0 4, 0 3. Those are the kills and deaths for the four other members on his team, he was six and three. Mm -hmm. He was still trying to do work on that Vladimir, um, and they really couldn't get any other part of the composition going, so it really wouldn't work. But here, is it the Thunderdome time? Is it time yeah. well, for the moving. Camille Alti into Galio? Can Huni get out of everything? We'll find out right now in this episode of Top Dive. Huni goes down. Looking for impact Still almost. a little bit more. They get themselves in. Phoenix and Dardock weren't able to get the last bit of distance to get the damage. Well, saw there on to impact. He gets out with a flash. Bot lane gets a few hits here. 
Oh, nice cleanse by Altac coming out of the Chain of Corruption instantly, and a quick lick from Adrian disengages that. Yep, Summoner Spellbook, he's already used it to TP and swapped it to cleanse right before the level sixes came out. So able to cleanse that one oh, away. Man. Yep, seeing this one coming a mile away. Saw the Galio from Champion <laughs> Select as well. The Thunderdome, there's no escaping that for Huni. Flash out. Yeah. Not enough retaliation as Echo Fox. They read it as well, yeah. but you can't read it at that speed that Galio <laughs> moves. Pole Belter was already on the way. Gotta start up in that reading level. Got off the read level, man. Those are the IQs. We know Pole Belter has that. <laughs> 12 minutes in. Bot lane looks to reset here as they get some nice vision on the bot side. Both playing towards that right wall, though, to make sure they don't get caught up in anything too tricky. X Smithy just on the bot will be seen by a ward. And they may think, yeah, with that HP, we could get them into a fight they may not want, just not under the turret. We'll see how they play it. Is he going to take the cone right into Darda? That's what I was thinking. It'll be interesting, though, because he'll hit a bush, and he might stealth when he hits it. So it could be pretty funny. But he catches him in the air with Glacial Prison, but it's down. Yeah, it's down right now. Oh, he's going to back. Oh, well. Thought there might have been a caster curse. Gonna get damage on the turret, and now Dardock will show. Actually, a good show as well. I thought the rotation from Phoenix was coming down for a moment there, but they are going to slow it down. They don't have enough vision on the backside of the map. Dardock will get that now to make sure if they do engage, yep. it will be safe. They just spotted him, and that means that mm -hmm. you're gonna have X Smithy on the top side clearing his rafters, clearing his red with no issue here, and possibly revisiting top side because it's just been where he really wants to be around. Nice dodge. Get out of that initial Shelly damage. Looks like he's going to be soloing out the Rift Herald here. So Fox is going to take that control towards the bot side. Not knowing Rift Herald will be at one of their turrets quite soon. Impact rotates down as he gets the turret push. So they're just going to take this quite fast without the knowledge of Echo Fox here. Both teams have a few things on their plate they're able to work off of. TL kind of looking down the road as Fox gets their turrets now. Fox, yeah, they got that bottom turret, so maybe they lane swap it. Mm. The Mountain Drake is still up, so I actually expect Echo Fox to go back to the regular lane assignments that they were just in and go back down to bottom with their dual lane and try to get that Mountain Drake, which would then help them get turrets, get uh, you know, the Baron later on. So that's what I would expect here. And I like that Huni backs up and starts pushing Xmithy out of the jungle, getting Dardox camps. Look at this, just coming up on that 15-minute CSD for our top laners. Really no discrepancy there. Huni's coming back to lane, so he'll clean those up. Exactly what you would expect from these two, even with a bit of jungler intervention. Looking for double lift. Abyssal Voyage. They come out of the ground into double lift's life. He is not going to have fun and here. But he through. Pole Belter just on the side to enter into the fight. Quick Devour to get it up. Fates call back in. Then they spit out Dardock. You're just popping out of the woodwork right now. And that's going to be enough to lock him down. We find Ole on the ground. Now they're going to get the last breath over onto Poe Belter. He entered the fight thinking it was their initiation. And he leaves the fight being Echo Fox's kill. Beautiful turnaround there from Echo Fox. They were able to find that Galio ultimate down and get out. It looked like Ole dropped the ball there. We'll have to see it again with his headbutt pulverized. It looked like Adrian was able to escape because of that. What a turn of events. And a little bit of vision there early for Echo Fox allows them to skirt around the initial parts of that fight. And again, we talked about that Tom Pench. Denied a lot of damage in that fight. Back and forth, Fates Call and Tom Kench denied and made two people invulnerable. Pretty disgusting, as they now go for Dragon. Yep, pick up that Mountain Drake. They made that play on the bottom side. Looks like they'll just lose that Wolf Camp. And mm. Phoenix, he's doing uh -oh. the blow. He's, he is here. Phoenix Sandwich? Ah, he's <laughs> just going to smite it away. <laughs> Thank you. And TY for Leash. Let's see this one more time, because they go on to Double Lift with the Abyssal Voyage. He goes off to the side. It's awfully quiet down here. Yeah. Lands the root on Adrian. Adrian flashes over, and right here, the headbutt does knock Adrian oh. out. And then Impact goes in, and it looks like there was a fizzle there on his ultimate. So he went after the target that Adrian wow. uh, ended up eating, I believe. It was either the Fate's Call or it was Adrian getting the Devour there. It was very hard to tell in that moment who exactly his target was but then they're just able to clean up immediately afterwards. 
that last second flicker of a play where it fizzles out and everybody's one step too deep into a fight. It's kind of the hardest thing to come back from or disengage once you've done that. And we see Echo Fox take Whoa. quite a big advantage from that. Yeah, watch it one more time. That was the uh, that was the nesting doll. No, yeah, it was Fate's Call and Devour. Yeah. Like two invulnerabilities. I had no idea which person he targeted because <laughs> Adrian ate Dardock and then Altec pulled in Adrian. So there were three people yeah. inside of that Callista. It was pretty or cool. two people inside, so there were three all at once. That's why you, do, you don't even know. Where are they coming from? That's Where are some they going to go? That's stuff right there. How has it happened? Nobody knows. We just saw it happen. We still don't. <laughs> for 17 minutes on the clock, a 2K gold lead after that fight in the bot side here for Echo Foxes. They start encroaching those wards a little bit deeper to keep the plays coming. Oh, still looking for plays onto Hooney. The TP is trying to reinforce, but... Boom! They finish it? They're going to finish it? Oh, the Abyssal Voyage was right under the feet of Xmithy. Flashes out, finds the team on the top side. Ole trying to keep Dardock at bay. Do they initiate a fight on that? Dardock gets himself into a safe spot as they are just changing sides. Saying, Ali Ali Oxen free. who's safe to come over? Pole Belter goes over it. He's got to get back to his team. Now it's Ole to get himself in the fight. Adrian gets the stopwatch down. Phoenix trying to deliver damage over the wall. Oh. He knows he's going down in the trade, but he wants to kill. Pole Belter now a sliver of health. Rend it down as Dardock and Altec stand with Adrian at the end of the fight. This is my kind of game, Woo. Riv. This has so much action in it, and it's coming down to mechanics and split-second decisions there in these fights. Because Huni is the one who gets engaged on, but it's the collapse from the rest of the team that turns it around. The teleport that looks like this will be one that's canceled. No, everybody is on the same page here with Altec and Adrian coming in and Dardock with the flank. So it's Smithy flashes, goes through the bush, and then they all get out of the Galio ultimate. It looked like it might have been better there on impact to get multiple people, but it's these split-second decisions as Pole Belter is deep in the team and he just starts having spears stacked up in him. Adrian stopwatch comes out, gets away, and then Phoenix says, I have enough damage here with the prepped E onto double it. He flashes after him yep. and finishes him off. And that ends up being a three for two, I believe, in favor of Echo Fox, just barely. Super hectic. Over the wall fights requiring quite a bit of vision as well. You see the damage there of Altec being able to stand on that backside. Safety of Arias rushing forward. A Sejuani and a Tom Kench basically peel them off of you. Still anybody's fight here. That was just kind of one way we see these fights go. If that pole belter alt hits, as you said, on impact, I think it's much different. Yeah, and that's all it takes is one button press on a different person, right. especially with these big, like, macro ultimates mm -hmm. where you throw it down, it has such a large effect. That one button press does mean a whole lot here where he threw it down onto Xmithy to protect him from being jumped on, but he was already out of the fight, and impact had just gone in simultaneously. A little bit of love for Red Buff as Echo Fox is now able to Oni? start denying resources. Oni's Red Buff. He's a little bit behind in terms of level, yeah. but he does need to catch up there. Just help him kind of keep that bay in a split push. We'll check his gold really quickly. He's actually pretty much even in gold. He's down by like 100, which is pretty much nothing. Anyways. But he has invested into Doran's Blades, which he will have to sell <laughs> come third item. It's so good. You know, whenever I see that, I, I imagine like taping them together. Kind of like you put a straw inside a straw. Oh, yeah, make longer yeah, yeah. straws. So you got like three blades glued together. Not going to do as much damage, but when you get teammates up there, they are able to drop things very fast. Things on the Baron. 20 minutes. Baron just spawned. They killed Xmithy. They killed the smite. Yep. They're saying, all right, it's time to go. They lost the damage dealer. All right. Fight on a Phoenix. Venkak Impact get a huge teleport top play. Wait. Never mind. He just went down in HP. I figured that was going to go in his They're favorite way. And they are going to continue. They got the damage of Altec. They're going to be rendered out with the smite. Easy, <laughs> easy here for Echo Fox. 30 seconds after it spawn, they take down Baron. Echo Fox, we use Baron power play to talk about the gold that you get from a Baron. Echo Fox actually just make Baron power plays at 20 minutes constantly. <laughs> and they try to go for it very consistently. Yep. TSM was on to it yesterday. But TL, with Xmithy getting caught top lane off that collapse, and trying to pick on Huni more. They're able to get that Baron right as it spawns, 20 minutes. Looney's been getting delivered minions too. This is still a lane. There's still turrets on the top side, so that means they just keep coming in quick off of those turrets as his get pushed down. Got his Phantom Dancer going, 193 to 173, is he? But he's been able to hang out, and yeah. the rest of the team is just having fun around the map. Said, Hooney, do your thing. 
we can take these fights. A 4-1 and 1 Phoenix now getting quite big and a change for him from yesterday on a Fiora game. He tried to kind of go outside the box for himself. Yeah, it was definitely his worst game of the split so far. A Fiora was not very convincing and they were talking about his champion pool desk being possibly limited, but hold on, Adrian. Gray Health already Adrian used Paul. quite early to keep the fight going, but now he's got enough teammates where it'll work. Hero's entrance comes in. Nice fates call to get him out. Bounce back in! And the bounce house begins. It's gonna be down on the right side. Ole and Double have tried to focus down one. Adrian just flashes himself out. How are they still alive? Intense back and forth from Echo Fox. That was sick. That's a clean ace for Echo Fox. Five for zero, and they're gonna start pushing the base. Absolutely disgusting positioning back and forth. The slivers of health asking just baiting TL to go a little bit further in these fights. And Echo Fox makes quick work of another one, teleporting themselves and the minions forward. They want to win. Down to the Nexus turrets. And Echo Fox looking to get the win. 22 minutes in, now on the second turret. And it looks like with four seconds left, TL will have nothing to say about the Nexus. Dardock puts himself in front, and the quick Orange Fox jumps over the Nexus. Echo Fox takes down Team Liquid. Team Liquid have those three fastest game of the split record. Echo Fox says, hold my beer. 22 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. Yeah, that is a 2018 yeah. spring NALCS record. Absolutely ridiculous. And you kind of see what Echo Fox has ready. They didn't think the game was going to end, but the possibility was there for them. All they did was take down X Smithy. X Smithy, not completely his fault. Somebody got caught, it happens, but that led to that Baron. There were more that happened after the Baron, but what a consecutive set of plays so quickly at 20, 20 minutes and 38 seconds into the game. It's a barrage, and if you can't keep up with it from Echo Fox, they are just gonna shut you down. That was so fast in terms of closing the game. People talk about 8.3 long games. Echo Fox, no, that's not the case here. <laughs> Rick Fox showing love every week, every day. He talks about his team and talks them up to the moon. And that's about the way they've been playing. Echo Fox now 10 and 2 in the spring split here as they are completely making waves. And the matchup for Hooney versus Impact, mm. he's got to be happy about that. Yeah, I mean, one, three, and five. He'll be happy about the win. <laughs> yes. But the rest of the team Very good really contact. did good step contact. up. Like that last team fight was really sick to watch it over again because the Galio had Echo Fox fans worried at the start because they had lost against it uh, yesterday when TSM had it. And then at that start of the game, it looked like the Galio was going to start getting the best of Echo yep. Fox again. And that time, they were able to skirt around it. Alltech pulling Adrian back out, throwing him in at the right time and skirting the that fight doll. perfectly. Like that was a very well orchestrated fight. And in the slight misstep of Ole headbutting out of that, that would have been the Tom Kench knocked up in the hero's entrance, him going down before you get the nesting doll play with the fates exactly. call into the devour. So a lot of things change with that one play. You can always say that, but we visualize it right there. It's a that. Jenga, yeah. right? One thing happens, boom, it's all gonna come collapsing down. And if you were able to just have that block in there, then you're good to go if you had just gone for something a little bit different. And Echo Fox, though, 10 and 2. And hey, Joel, he's 3 0 so far, I think. <laughs> Doing great. PA gonna go 5 0 on the day? We'll have to see. There's still two more games to go. But right now, we're gonna send it down to Avali and Echo, Echo Fox's Realm Warper in the mid lane. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Phoenix and Joanne, our lovely translator for today. Beating Liquid at their own game, you guys had the fastest game so far. How confident were you coming into this game? Uh, I never thought we were going to lose against Liquid because we already beat them easily. And that's my former team. And I really don't lose against my former team. And they picked, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, well, I won against Liquid. That's feeling super good. And they picked Galio, which is they should make play. Yesterday, we were against Galio, and I picked Viola. There was good pick in Scream, because in Scream, they go real well, but in stage, a lot different. But I think since they picked Galio, I felt like we're going to win this game, because they want to fight right. And I thought if we just fight with them, we're going to lose, uh, we're going to win whatever we pick. So I felt pretty good. 
I'm glad you're feeling good. This is actually the first time that I've gotten to speak with you in the split so far. You're on a new org with a new team, and you're playing with Dardock again. How are you enjoying playing on Echo Fox so far? Uh, everyone know we are throwing, throwing. We have little throwing, but that means we are funny team and we are aggressive team. So I hope you guys enjoy watching our game. And Dardock is my. I really love playing with him because he, he is super aggressive and I'm super aggressive too. So our synergy is really goes well. So I like it. And I want to pick your brain a little bit. We just had patch 8.4 come in this week. There's a lot of mid lane changes. What are your overall thoughts on the patch so far? Uh, actually, I don't know where because when I see patch note, this patch note, I got head egg a lot because I item, item is super changed. So actually, I don't know yet, but it's pretty good because if always the same meta is you feel boring. So this is good patch, I think. Is there anything you're excited for or maybe you want to see? Uh, I love to see more assassins. So Starbucks got getting nerves, so I hope players cannot play sessions. Well, congratulations again on your win, and thank you so much. And for more on this game, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avali. Great to hear from Phoenix there uh, in his, uh, or rather, following the victory. That was the word yeah. I was looking for. I following mean, shouldn't be that hard of a word to find. I just actually am so happy to see Phoenix back in the LCS and doing well because he was such like a joyful, like goofy guy when he's, when we first got him on Team Liquid. He was so funny and then like over the course of the career that he had on Team Liquid as Team Liquid kind of fell off, he like you could see went through some tough times to the mm -hmm. point where like in that gauntlet run that they had at the end of season six where he had like Jinth and Arc second on his team. He had like that outburst where he was like, who am I even playing with anymore? Like, right. who have you put around me? Like, what do you want me to do? I can't carry five people. And then after that, he dipped into the challenger scene. It, I felt like he didn't get a fair shake. So personally for me, as a, you know, coach formerly of Phoenix and someone who just likes his personality. It's good to see him on a good team that's winning and with other people who bring him up, like Hooney, who is probably just such a positive influence for him. All right, we have top of the day. Both of you had him top three on the mid lane tier list. Mm -hmm. They pick up another victory here. Let's take a look at how they did it. We've talked plenty about the draft Whew. as we got to do it yeah. before the game, but I wanted to get some, some concise win conditions from the two of you, given the comps as they were drafted. So let's talk about these real quick. Yeah, so I have immediate regret about five <laughs> minutes into that game I was like I'm starting to second guess the flip-flop I still kind of like Team Liquid's draft because they just didn't reach 20 minutes uh with even gold they got completely blasted the bottom lane lost uh even though they were camping Hooney they never denied him any CS so they weren't really putting him that far down in gold and they never really had map pressure so Echo Fox completely outplayed them through and through it's you know kind of similar to mine I didn't want the galley to influence the side lanes because you should be winning a lot of these matchups on their own and they generated big CS leads and then the bot lane took the turret by itself so it worked out pretty well to Echo Fox's win conditions uh but it was very scary and was not like like Jet said like I saw those drafts and I was like oh god this looks Suspect. Pretty well's one way She's to never put it. Flip I mean, 3.6k gold lead at 20 minutes. So, Jat, that's <laughs> I mean, that's over two minutes later. That's your win condition there, right? I mean, that, and then yeah, <laughs> the game happen. ended two and a half minutes after that. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy to go from a three k gold lead to ending the game. That generally doesn't happen that early. Mm -hmm. So that just speaks to how aggressive Echo Fox plays. But you have to get to that gold lead, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole. The onus is on Echo Fox to start <laughs> mounting that lead. Let's take a look at a couple replays. The first one in the bot lane. Some interesting interactions here in terms of the mechanics with Tom Kench and Fate's Call. Yeah, already broke the bot lane turret. Double is kind of overextended down the bot lane, wanting to get to CS. Leads to this crazy kind of hectic fight. And because there's so many defensive tools on this team comp that you don't think about, the Devourer, the Fate's Call, comboing them together to pull Dardock out and then double re-engage was super cool to see. The teleports come in, Hooney collapses as well. And like Jat said, kind of got camped pretty hard. But yeah. this is the problem with Echo Fox is if you don't shut down Hooney, he will run over the game. If you do shut down Hooney, their bot lane's constantly picking Kalista and winning that on its own. So it's a bit of, bit of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Right, and Jat, you follow that with the most Echo Fox plays of all Echo Fox plays. Boom. A singular pick onto the opposing jumper. Straight to the Baron. Let's get there. I mean, that's, that is, again, what we've been looking for out of a lot of other teams mm -hmm. beneath Echo Fox in the standings, right? We always point to this idea that you've got to be decisive and take small 
small man advantages and make them big ones. Yeah, and this was, I think, their best game, even if Huni did die a few times to ganks, because uh, even if we just go to the final fight, they, with the Baron, immediately didn't care about picking this fight. Adrian knows he is invincible this game. <laughs> right. There's a Callista alt up at all times, and they have the patience to actually wait out a lot of things. So they wait for, I believe, the Galio alt to come in. They say, okay, Adrian, now we'll pull you out with Callista. At that point, Callista's already stacked a ton of spears uh, into the rest of the fight. Doublelift is having a hard time getting involved because there's people all around him, Phoenix in his face the entire game. They already had the big lead, but the fact that they just kind of styled on Team Liquid by walking into them and forcing them to fight, won the game. And Huni, despite having a bit of a rough start there, had a huge influence on that team fight. Yeah. Wind walled a lot of Doublelift's damage, jumped on him, scared him out of that fight. You know, he starts drawing a lot of focus. He dips out of the fight and then comes flying back in to get a couple of last cleanup kills, so. We also saw how difficult it was for Smithy to get into that fight. He was dancing around the backside of that Raptor pit, having the opportunity to jump on Kalista, but he knew that as soon as he did, the Tom Pinch is gonna pick him up, move him out to safety, and so yeah. very little ways for Team Liquid once in that deficit it to maneuver within a fight and actually find a victory. Yeah, and we've been very uh, like hesitant to call Echo Fox the best team in NA. Like we're saying they're the best team, but they're maybe, they're they're the number one they team, the, right? The but are they the pros? Yeah. And oh, maybe their drafts are questionable. And like I actually still think that there are the mid game throws, and sometimes the drafts are weird, and sometimes they misplay. But I'm looking at their schedule coming okay. up. They just played C9, TSM, and Liquid in the last three. The best teams they have left in the next three weeks are Clutch and the Hundred Thieves. This is the first place team. That's a really I would be good point. shocked if they don't yeah. finish the split in first place. So right. They're really good and they're better than all the other teams based on the record. And I like this game also because it's a good bounce back game from yesterday where like they had this weird draft. Everyone was playing bad but Huni and it really showed. And then this time it's like, okay, Huni gets hard camp, but we're playing well this time and we can support him and kind of say, sorry for yesterday, but we'll carry you today. Right. It's nice to, to look at an Equifox game and not call it the Huni show, right? They found another way to victory even when he wasn't performing to top tier. Of course, there was a lot of focus in the top lane, and it's volatile when you got Yasuo versus mm -hmm. Camille as the matchup. Uh, for Team Liquid, what's you know what's the ah. diagnosis here? Because uh, in a lot of ways, again, you see, we, we, we declared that we liked the draft yeah. uh, at the conclusion of seeing it, and so that points to misplays within the game or mismanagement of the, of the champions uh, around the map. And you got to see it, right? Like, the fact that Impact didn't get the good Camille ultimates off with Galio when they had opportunities. Galio was desynchronized. They actually lost the duo lane, which almost never happens for that team. Ole messed up a headbutt pulverize in a mm. crucial moment. Like, they had a lot of individual misplays, which when Team Liquid put this roster together, they thought that would be the last thing they had to worry about. So, it's a pretty bad loss for them. All right, Team Liquid still trying to find their footing. Echo Fox picking up the victory. It's time to take a breather. When we come back, it's Counter Logic Gaming versus Golden Guardians. Game 4 is coming up after the break. A grill <laughs> is a grill. Oh, oh, oh. And fries are fries. What the f***, Eugene? What is that song? Who would he find in those attacks? That's where the coup de gras comes in to get a little bit more, but not enough. Let's go for it, for Nice. Oh, yeah, Galio. Galio, Galio. Galio, son. I can stun again. I have ulti, okay. I have ulti, I have ulti. Stun, 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 stun. Nice. Nice. Phoenix trying to deliver damage over the wall. Oh. He knows he's going down in the trade, but he wants to kill. Pobelt are now a sliver of health. Rend it down. I'm ulting Galio as well. Nice. Bears with HP. Nice. We got it, we got it. Yasuo? Nice. Oh, nice. Nice, guys. Can we end or what? I think so. I think so. Nice.